Hello and welcome to this week's Scan It Saturday and for this project what I'm going to aim to do is respond to a request that I had from Jean Marie Penny who asked about creating an Art Deco frame. Now Jean asked for it to be a specific size however what I wanted to show you was a very very simple way of creating it so that it could be any size. Um, so we'll start by designing the corners and then obviously we'll look at how to make it into a larger frame by duplicating and welding those bits together. Right, so let's get started. We need to start with a brand new project and we're gonna need a couple of basic shapes to work with. So I'm going in here to my basic shapes and I'm gonna start with a square and a circle. Uh, now, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep these shapes here and I'm going to click on D to duplicate and start with this square here. I'm going to bring up my properties pane and move that over to the side just so I can see really what I'm doing in here. A couple of adjustments I'm going to make in here. I'm going to drop the size of this square down to 50 millimeters. I've kept the maintain aspect ratio on so that I keep it as a square. Then again, I am going to press D to duplicate while the square is selected. I'm going to drop this down to 40. Okay, so highlight both by clicking the left mouse button and dragging that over both shapes. We're going into edit and we're going to align it on both the vertical and horizontal axes. And then we are going to subtract. So we're basically punching one shape through the other to create almost like a frame. If I apply a color fill, you'll see what I mean. There we go. Now. The next thing that I'm going to do is start um, duplicating things, but I need to get a bit closer to see what's going on. So I'm going to go in here and I am going to duplicate this frame once and twice. Now the first thing that I need to do is make sure that these two are overlapping to points. So a couple of things that I'm going to do. I'm going to take off the outline from both and I'm going to change one of the fill colors to a different color. This means that when I zoom in here, I've not just got a screen full of color, I actually can see which shape is going where. So I'm just gonna drag this until the point of one square is right on the point of the other. I think, maybe use this. And I'm using my arrow keys on my keyboard to do the nudging to make sure that I get that um, precise control over those. And I'll zoom out and then zoom back in a little bit further back. Okay, so I reckon that's okay. Now I'm going to click once on this square and then press my shift key and click on here. And then I'm going to press G on my keyboard to group those two together. Then I'm going to select everything that's there and again align them centrally and vertically. Uh, now the next thing that I'm going to do is weld those together to create almost like a chain link. There we go, that's that done. Bring that down a bit more. Now, I wanted to create another little um, box in the corner, like a solid box. So I'm selecting my square over here, duplicating that and bringing it in. And I'm gonna drop that down in size using the drag handles. I think that's probably about the right size for me, but I can obviously get control um, of that precisely through the, oh, actually, let's just make it a round number. Let's make it 40. I can do that through here in the properties menu. I'm just going to get rid of that again for a minute. Click and drag to select everything. And this time we're going to align on the left hand edge and also the top edge. So now the top and the left will be properly aligned. And then I'm going to weld this lot together to give me almost like my um, Art Deco shape, which I think is absolutely beautiful. Now, I don't think they've quite aligned, so I am going to use my undo key, very useful indeed. And I'll just go back in, and what I'll do is I'll change the properties on this box to match my design. Do you remember me saying in a previous video that sometimes those lines, outlines on the shapes can have an impact on, um, on how you align things? That's possibly what's happened here. Okay, so I think I've got a better view there. Fit to all content, that's fine. 
select everything there and then <coughs> weld that together. Right, so that's my corner designed. And now what I want to do is figure out the shape that I'm going to add those corners to. So I'm going to again duplicate my square and I'm going to set this size to be around, let's say 150 millimeters. Uh, actually, no, I'll make it a bit bigger. Okay, there we go, that's that one. Now, with my properties, I'm going to again apply color fill, but I'm going to make it something totally different. And through the edit menu, I'm going to send it right to the back of the stack so that we can see our corner shape on top. I'm selecting both and aligning again. Oh, hang on, I need to get rid of that outline, don't I? But to select both and use my alignment tools again, left and top. And that's now precisely positioned that corner over the top of there. I'm going to duplicate that corner by pressing the D key and then using the shift and rotate combination, I am going to position another one as close to the top left, uh, top right as I can get there. I'm going to select both of those and align to the right and to the top. Right. So that's two squares done. I'm going to select both of those and I'm going to press G to group those. Now, as you can see, the total width is matching my square, which was 200 millimeters. So that's fine. But just to be doubly sure they're totally aligned, I'm going to align them centrally as well. Uh, oh, don't need some jump. There we go. Now, next up, I'm going to duplicate that group and rotate that and drag that to the bottom as close as I can get it and then I'm going to select that group plus the back square by dragging my um, selection tool across those shapes and we'll edit align to the bottom and align centrally okay so I think I've got everything in place. The next thing that I would like to do is punch out a shape in the middle of the green square at the background. So I'm duplicating. I'm going to drop that down to 190. And then I am going to drag that off, drag that off. I'm going to group these so that they stay where they are. I'm going to select and align my two squares and then use my subtract function to create a frame. Now bringing that back in, just selecting everything there and aligning centrally, vertically and horizontally. And my final step will be to weld those together. And now, as you can see, I have a lovely Art Deco style frame. I can go in and double check that um, what I've done with these editing hasn't created any weird anomalies. There's a few um, little nodes that I probably would like to get rid of just to make sure that those lines are cutting perfectly straightly. Sometimes when you weld, extra nodes can appear. So by getting rid of them, we can make sure that it's a totally straight line when it's cut on the machine. Right, I think that's okay. Just looking around the rest of those, they look all right to me. Okay, and there's our finished Art Deco frame. Now, of course, you can resize this. You could resize the little squares in the corners to give you variation. You could weld these to a rectangle, as Jean Marie was asking. Um, so, listen, once you've started combining these corners and bits and pieces in the squares, the world is your lobster, as they say. So uh, that concludes this week's Scan It Saturday. Obviously, I've got a list of the rest of your um, projects to go through, so they'll be coming up in future episodes. If you've got any other requests, please obviously list them on the blog comments or on the YouTube comments. Either way, hopefully I can get around to doing them in the near future. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again soon. 
For more hints, tips and tutorials, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or visit me on any of these social networking sites.